Hello everybody, welcome to a review for Kerbal Space Program. I've decided that I'm going to make a review for every game that I cover on the channel, so you're gonna have on one hand my entire playthrough and my journey with the game, and then my closing thoughts consolidated in a short review video. This is not gonna be necessarily a very formal format, but I'm going to cover first the technical aspects including gameplay graphics and sound and then at last I'm going to discuss my actual experience with the game. So without further ado, this is how KSP did for me. This game is the material answer to the question can you make rocket science fun and accessible and the answer to me is yes, they have achieved that and the way they have achieved it is by providing you an adequate level of abstraction enough so that you don't need an actual degree in rocket science, but rather all you need is an analytical mind and you can jump in and start doing your designs and just incrementally improve in order to achieve your goals. Now, things you can do range from building rockets to plotting your trajectories, landing your vessels, docking onto other vessels. As you can imagine, there's a lot of planning that goes into that and each step on the way has to be worked out almost on your own. There is some tutorialization in the game, but it's really just a guideline and uh, most of the learning experience is up to you and it's a very rewarding experience. The obstacles in this game are absolutely real and usually cannot be circumvented by just better gear or having access to better parts. Instead, you need to improve your knowledge and understanding of the different systems in the game and mechanics, everything involved in it. Once you do, it's so evident that you've got into a new plateau of skill that it really makes it a very rewarding experience. For example, getting into orbit at first seems absolutely daunting. You need a, a very adequate balance of rocket fuel versus propulsion, weight, all of these different factors. You have to science the hell out of that and make it work in order for you to have enough potential to get into orbit. Again, at first, th this seems like an impossible and overwhelming task, but at one point, this becomes absolute routine. And the simple fact that that is such a visible and evident progression in terms of skill, knowledge, and understanding just makes this an incredibly rewarding experience to go through because, again, you can very visibly see that you've got into a new plateau of skill and understanding. This coupled with the progress in terms of getting to different planets, seeing different planets, landing on them, just makes it a very, very enjoyable experience. There's also a huge mod community in this game, and a lot of the mods circumvent most of the issues that the game has. Anything ranging from UI tweaks to actual new parts that you can integrate in your designs, all of that adds an immense amount of variety and just overall enjoyment to the game. So let's discuss graphics. It is an indie title, and with that status comes some limitations. And you do see that in the form of pixelation and wonky camera at times, there are low textures, um, a lot of the times you will rotate the camera and the view will get a little bit screwed up. Those are present, but they were not issues that detracted from my experience whatsoever. I was very immersed despite all of these issues. In fact, some of the views were absolutely incredible. You had stellar landscapes, sunrises, and just the, the sheer fact that you can see a planet approach it and then land on it and the views and everything in between are just actually amazing. I'll also say kudos on the propulsion particle effects. All of those were really well done and I was impressed throughout the entire title. Another issue the game has is limited rocket parts are available in the base game. This is largely surmounted by the fact that so many mods are out there and they generally work very well. You can integrate all of those different parts in your own designs and really make the vessels your own. And now to talk a little bit about sound, of course this includes music as well, and the music is very lean in this game. It does come out when you're in outer space, but this is erratic at times and there will be moments where the music should 
have kicked in, but it hasn't. And there's this long, awkward silence. For that particular reason, in my playthrough, I've actually turned off the music in the game and used my own, which in hindsight, I guess, is not a great testament to the quality of the music implementation in the game. However, the actual game sounds are really well done, and any time there was propulsion happening, that felt real and very immersive. The different rockets had different enough sounds, and it was accurate to the point where I actually felt I was firing a rocket. So moving on to my closing thoughts and my overall experience with the game, I think by this point it's abundantly clear that it has been very positive and I do have a full playthrough on the channel, you can go to that, you can go through the journey with me and see what you think or play the game for yourself. But really, this is a game that fosters creativity and ingenuity to a really incredibly high level. I haven't actually seen this done in any other game that I've played so far. It really is a game that does not hold your hand and even though it gives you a little bit of a framework with the missions and a little bit of a guideline what you should be doing, it really is up to you to forge your own narrative, your own story, your journey, set up your own goals and everything in the journey towards those goals, even if it's a step back, is a key part of your story. The powerful message this game has intertwined in it is the growth mindset perspective. You're always questioning how you can do things better, you're always striving for improvement, questioning your designs, your decision making. All of that is incredibly powerful, not only in games but in life. And I think that's a huge takeaway that people can have with this game. My playthrough on the channel was very much geared towards space exploration. I disregarded most of the missions that the game threw at me and my goal was interplanetary travel. So everything I did was towards that objective. So we built some satellite stations, we did explore the moons as well for science, right? But then after that point we started building this amazing huge space station that we we're going to travel with. So the idea is that we were gradually going to build this thing and give it enough propulsion that we'll be able to take a lot of Kerbals out into outer space, explore different planets, do different things. And the feeling of building something so complex from scratch is incredibly empowering. And it was just a very amazing feeling to actually get to a different planet with that station, all of my Kerbals in there, exploring new lands. And so to me, landing on that planet with the sunrise coming up, the music swelling as well, was just a very emotional, empowering moment. Knowing where I had come from, all the challenges I had faced and braved on the way. In closing, this was a great experience for me personally and I recommend it to anyone who likes problem solving or has an analytical mind. I think the devs have done a great job in what I consider a daunting task in making space exploration available and accessible to people in the form of a game. When it comes to ranking, to me it doesn't make sense to talk about numbers or even to take money into account too much because after all we're all different people, $60 means something different to you than it does to me and also a numeric rank means different things for different people. So to me the commodity that everybody shares is time, right? So all of us have only 24 hours in a day and many of us have full-time jobs or, you know, maybe you have university or whatever, you only have two hours to play games every day. And so to me what matters is, is this game worth getting into right now? Is it worth your two hours of free time today? And so I like to rank games according to the urgency with which you should get to them. Let's say this game is worth playing right now. So the two hours that you have today to play games stop what you're doing, play that game. Or is it the next one up on your list to play, or just play it when you get a chance, or don't even bother, just put it in your backlog, pick it up on a sale later on perhaps. And so to me Kerbal Space Program is a when you get the chance type of game. It is a great game and it can be amazing to you depending on your personality and the type of games you're into, but I don't think it's for everybody. And it will always be there, it's one of those almost timeless games that will age pretty well, even though the graphics again are limited by its indie status, it will always be a great experience. And so I don't think you're in a big hurry to get into it, rather it will always be there for you when you're ready for it. 
I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, perhaps consider watching my playthrough and going through this journey with me. If not, consider buying the game and going through it on your own. And let me know any thoughts you have about the game. Have you played it? Are you considering playing it? Any of that is highly appreciated. Thank you ever so much for watching, and as always, catch you next time.